Hello, this is Mr. Kent of MrKent.com, and I did have a Bible blog started over at uh, uh, Blogger.com, which is uh, part of Google's uh, many, many applications, but I found that trying to type and type and try to uh, say what I wanted to say uh, wasn't working as well as I wanted it to. So, what I have done is set up a YouTube channel called Bible Blog, or Mr. Kent's Bible Blog. And uh, this is a lot easier for me to do than to try to um, type everything. Making a YouTube video takes a lot of time, but I've done so many that it isn't going to take me, uh, you know, it's, it goes pretty easy. So, this is easier than typing, we'll put it that way. Now, in the uh, last blog that I put up over on blogger.com, I had uh, covered, I think it was through chapter uh, chapter 9, and um, make sure here, uh, yeah, chapter 9, and God said he would never, or chapter 9, he said never would destroy the earth again. And uh, I talked about the uh, bow in the clouds and the rainbow. And, and I also mentioned that uh, the times of Noah were very similar to our times. And uh, so, you know, so, now I can't remember. Anyway, I pointed out that... Um, there is a prophecy in the Bible in the New Testament that says when uh, when it's like the times of Noah, that's really close to when Jesus is coming back. So I just have a bad memory because of my <laughs> bad memory. So anyway, we'll go, ahead, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to cover uh, just a little bit today, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll ch cover chapter 10 and chapter 11 of, of Genesis. And we're not going to cover everything because there's a lot of genealogy and so forth. But uh, chapter 10, verse 1 says, Now this is the genealogy of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the sons were born to, and sons were born to them after the flood. So they came out of the ark, and uh, the three sons and their wives, and Noah and his wife. And when they walked out of the ark, uh, it must have been a little mysterious to uh, realize that you were the only people alive on earth. And uh, you look around, there wasn't anybody else there. So let's jump to chapter, or verse 6, and it says, The sons of Ham were Cush, uh, Mizram, Put, and Canaan. And, uh, and down in uh, verse 15, it says, Canaan uh, begot Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. And uh, they... Uh, moved over to the land of Canaan that we know of, which is has become the promised land, uh, or become Israel. And uh, uh, Heth, the sons of Heth, is mentioned quite a bit when we get over to uh, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So uh, that was the land that, that uh, Abraham eventually moved into. Um Then it, uh, it in verse 21, it says, the chil And children were born also to Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder. And then if we uh, uh, look down, uh, it, it goes on through more uh, genealogies of Shem. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump down to chapter 11. And read verses 1 through 4. By the way, it's a good idea to have your Bible handy when, when uh, you uh, uh, come to this site. Because uh, we're, we're just going to look at the Bible. And one note that I would like to make is that I love the Word of God and I really enjoy teaching it. So, um, that's why I'm here. Okay. Now, before the flood, they probably only had one language. Uh, we don't know for sure. Maybe they had more than, well, I'm sorry. They had more than one language, in my opinion. And we don't know how many there were, but uh, uh, they, uh, you know, had spread over the earth. And they were, uh, there was many, many wicked people. 
and God destroyed them. But I have a feeling that they were had there was various languages. So uh, in verse one of chapter eleven, we read: Now the whole earth had one language and one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain. I didn't know they had plains back then, but uh, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. So they were traveling west. And um, if we take a look at Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1, I'll take a real quick jump. It says, God, So God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So it was God's plan for uh, Noah's uh, descendants to move on and uh, travel from where they were uh, over to uh, westwardly and uh, you can imagine if when Lewis and Clark were uh, assigned the task of, of marching across the United States and uh, their their departure point into the uh, lesser known areas was uh, St. Louis and uh, if they would have got to St. Louis and said, well, the folks here are really nice, I think we'll just stay here. I don't think uh, the president would have been very happy with them. Well, so this is what happened. The people found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And generally when you find... Um, clay which is what bricks are made of there's also oil there uh, it's not uncommon to find clay and oil together so they had they had uh, whatever they used to uh, to make their mortar um, they had they had everything they needed verse 4 and they said come let us build ourselves a city okay so uh, they're gonna make a city there instead of instead of moving on and a tower whose top is in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth so they don't want to they don't want to go spread over the face of the earth they want to just settle down there and that was against the the commandment of the lord in uh, genesis chapter 9 verse 1 and it's not uncommon for human beings to want to make a name for themselves and sometimes I've kind of wondered if I if I really was thinking right when I made my website called MrKent.com. But the uh, the reason I made it was because my students were calling me Mr. Kent, and they wanted the the uh, they wanted an online typing test and typing tutor and stuff like that. And they they were calling me Mr. Kent, so I used MrKent.com. But I didn't do it so people would say, "Oh, that's my name" or something like that. I was just trying to make it easy for them to find it on the internet. Back then, it was, uh, this was back in 1999, back then it was easy to get a domain name, um, a lot easier than it is now, because so many of them have been taken up. But they said, let's make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. So they were, um, they were not willing to do what God had told them to do. And uh, so then verse 5 it says, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. And that doesn't mean that, uh, first of all, let's go back to where they built the tower. The, the, they, they were going to build a tower to go into the heavens. And um, at that time, the, uh, uh, a lot of the worshiping was astrology. And uh, so if they made a tower uh, real tall, then they could get up and they could gaze into the heavens. And uh, they weren't really uh, trying to make a tower that went clear up to heaven. Uh, there's three heavens. There's the atmospheric he heaven here on Earth. And then there's the uh, astronomy, the, the stars and the moon and all that stuff. And in the third heaven is where God is. So uh, that uh, they weren't trying to, uh, to get all the way up to heaven. But they wanted to make what is called a high place. Okay. 
And so God said, let us go down there. This is verse 7. And confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So, um, notice it says, let us. That's the Father and the Son. God and Jesus. And um, uh, so they... they the Bible uses the term we, or let us go down. Okay, now he's going to confuse their language. He's not going to punish them. So it's not a punishment. What it is, is it's a restraint. Uh, it's like closing the door on their plans. And if you've ever had plans that you, uh, you thought you wanted to do, and then God closed the door on that, uh, you understand. He puts, He doesn't punish you, he just puts a restraint on it. And I've had that happen in my life. Uh, probably several times. <laughs> so uh, God closes the door, verse 8, So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. And that right there is the, that's the crux of the matter. It wasn't the fact that they were making the tower. We talk a lot about the Tower of Babel, but... What God wanted them to do was to move on and not settle down. He wanted to spread them over the earth. That was his plan. And so then they had to move on because they all had different or a bunch. Of, you know, he broke it up into several languages. And so uh, they couldn't communicate except that, you know, this group could communicate with this group, with, you know, all the people in that group because they all had one language. And then there was another group. They had a different language and they could all communicate. And so it was like they had their little gangs or their little cliques. And so then they spread out and uh, started spreading over the earth. In verse 9, therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. So uh, now they've, they've moved on and they've scattered out, and it goes through another genealogy, um, Verse 10 says, this is the genealogy of Shem. And Shem was 100 years old when he begot uh, Aphrophaxad, and, and uh, that was two years after the flood. So we go through a genealogy, and we come down through a genealogy, which we won't, we won't uh, go through the whole thing. But we get down to uh, it's, uh, verse 22, where it says, Serug uh, lived 30 years and begot Nahor. After he begot Nahor, Serug lived 200 years and begot sons and daughters. Nahor lived 29 years and begot Terah. After he begot Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and begot sons and daughters. And verse 26 says, Now Terah lived 70 years and begot Abram and Nahor and Haran. So uh, Terah was the father of Abraham as we know him. And verse 27 says, this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in his native land of Ur of the Chaldees. So uh, he didn't, he, 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 uh, he died as a, at, a young, at a young age, but he had a son named Lot. Verse 29, then Abram, and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nahor, Nahor's wife, Milcah, she was the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ishkah. So uh, what Nahor did was um, when, when uh, uh, her, uh, Haran died, he had two children. He had Lot and he had Milcah a son and a daughter. And uh, we're going to find that Abram adopted Lot as uh, his nephew. And then Nahor adopted Milcah and eventually married her. And uh, thanks to my wife, she gets all this stuff straight for me. And her name is Beth. So uh, uh, that gets us to uh, verse 31. And this is where then Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go to the land of Canaan. Now, 
it says they left in order to go to the land of Canaan. Now, remember, Canaan uh, was one of the sons of, uh, I can't remember the name now, but anyway, he settled in what we now call Israel. And so they left in order to go to Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. Now, it wasn't called Haran when they got there. Okay, It was later named Haran uh, in memory of uh, the, the father of, uh, of uh, Lot. So uh, when, when Moses wrote this, uh, he was calling it Haran, but it, they settled in this place which later became named Haran, and they dwelt there. So now they, they left to go to Canaan. It says they went, they, they uh, left the Ur of the Chaldees to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there. So they, they were on a like a thousand mile trip, and they stopped uh, two or three hundred miles uh, into the trip. And so, uh, verse 32, the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. So here we have, at the end of verse uh, chapter 11, we have, um, we have Abram and his wife and his nephew Lot. Uh, they're in uh, this land uh, called uh, Terah, or Haran, I'm sorry, and uh, they're dwelling there. And we're going to find out in verse 12 that the Lord kind of kicks him in the behind and says, now, remember, you're supposed to go to the land of Canaan. So we'll see that one, and we'll talk about that one in the next video.